dark, cold world out there. There's a time to live and a time for a man to die. There are places for dead men in the earth and the sky. Don't you venture too far now, cause you can't come back. From the place where the good guys always dress in black. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a brand new edition of Ring Respect Radio. I am Bobby Munson, and as always, I am joined by my co-host. He is the man with the angelic voice. He's Papa Smoke. Sir, how the hell are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, Munson, and a shout-out to all my wrestling people out there. Yes, wrestling people, we miss you so much. We want to see you coming up at live shows again. Uh, hang tight. We hope we're getting there soon. We're working on things. Uh We'll make it happen sooner or later, Papa Smokes. We'll be seeing all our good friends from the wrestling community again, live and in person. But until then, hopefully you're enjoying episodes of Ring Respect Radio and all your favorite pro wrestling-based shows here on YouTube. Uh, if you do like what we're doing, go ahead and click the like button down below and the subscribe button as well. Hey, everybody, we know that more of you out there are paying attention to the show but not subscribing to the channel. Subscriptions actually help us with the algorithms, boost us up the ranks, on YouTube and help get the show out to more people. So it takes just a second to head on down, click the subscribe button. It's a huge favor to both myself and Papa Smokes. We want to also give a shout out to our good friends at Backbreaker Media, who also host Ring Respect Radio on all their channels, all their podcasts as well. So Mike and everybody at Backbreaker Media, nothing but love for you guys. And thank you for all you do for Ring Respect Radio. So go out, check them out and everything, follow them. And also check out our good friends at the Canadian wrestling network as well follow them on all social media they also good supporters of ring respect radio and right before we get to the main show here papa smokes i also want to give a shout out to my friends over at love wrestling if you remember we had spencer love on the show a few months back before when love wrestling was just getting started things have kind of uh, exploded for him over this time and you're truly bobby munson going to be debuting a show over at love wrestling so we're going to be sharing the love between our channel and also with Love Wrestling, trying to share some of the fans. So if you like what we do, you like what they do, bring the love together and check out both shows. A lot of stuff to check out. We're looking forward to having you guys check out everything we have to offer here. So down to business though, Papa Smokes, MLW. We haven't talked about these guys for a while. They were on hiatus and we knew it was coming back. July the 11th was when the taping happened at the 2300 Arena. Fans back in the arena, this was huge. This was big excitement. It's Battle Riot 3, and we're here to talk about that today. So, uh, first of all, we want to maybe mention there was a draft that went on. We chose, we didn't cover the draft or anything like that as it went along. Uh, but just a few guys on the draft that were newcomers that were mentioned, we knew we were going to get to see Davey Richards. This was a big acquisition for MLW, Davey Richards, Ben not involved with wrestling for a while, making his comeback to MLW. Big news on that front. Also, uh, the suplex assassin Alex Kane was announced. Didn't know much about this guy, but once I got a good look in, man, I was ready to see some Alex Kane. And then EJ and Duca, what a star this guy was looking like. Saw the pictures, saw the videos, psyched to see EJ and Duca. That was some of the names coming out of that list for sure, Papa Smokes. Big hype for those guys going into this thing. I was excited. What are your thoughts? Yeah, the, the draft uh, introduced us to some new characters for the uh, MLW roster. Always very excited about that. Some of these guys I hadn't heard of before, so a brand new meeting, uh, including EJ and Duca and Alex King. Really some nice-looking talent coming into MLW. Court Bauer uh, opening up the purse strings, uh, getting some new guys. And uh, new talent can only help to uh, uh, brighten up and color up the, the roster and the action on the screen. And what a bunch of action we were going to see on this show. So just to get things started, before the Battle Riot match itself, we got to see Caesar, uh, sorry, Caesar Duran coming out to the ring. Caesar Duran, if anyone had paid attention to last season at the end, was revealed as El Jefe, the owner of Azteca Underground. Uh, this was going to be his kind of, I guess debut in front of the fans. Uh, this was not a pre-tape or anything like that. He got down to the ring, got down to business, cut a nice sounding promo inside that ring and stated that Court Bauer has made him the official matchmaker of MLW moving forward. So big news coming out of this. 
seems like Caesar Duran holds all the power in MLW right now as the matchmaker for MLW and also going to be in charge of Azteca Underground as well, Papa Smokes. Yeah, what a huge position for Caesar Duran and a good uh, find for MLW as well. And uh, Duran cut a nice promo in the ring before the event, but uh, as soon as he mentioned that he was MLW's new matchmaker, he had some of the wrestlers coming out and, uh, you know, uh, kind of politely demanding what they wanted from him and uh, that including uh, some tag teams, uh, Injustice, the newly formed LAX, and a few others uh, heating up the ring before the event even started. So we know we're in for some good tag team programs at the very least coming up uh, under the auspices of Caesar Duran. Yeah, and you know what? It, it made me laugh as soon as uh, Myron Reed kind of stepped up to Caesar Duran there. It was a little off mic, but it was enough to catch it where Caesar Duran, who the fuck are you? <laughs> Thrown right into the Yeah, yeah. There. Oh, that was fantastic. I loved every bit of it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Myron I think Reed, he can handle himself. Yeah, Myron Reed got in there. He told him who he was and what they wanted was that tag title shot. And Duran not uh, giving way to them or to Inju or sorry or to LAX who came out and also demanded the same thing. Uh, basically, this led to a heated battle between the two teams and inevitably kind of leads to the idea that we are going to get an injustice and LAX feud leading up to which one of those teams will go for the tag titles next. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, Lost Parks uh, have a tenuous grip on the tag team title with uh, some big talent chasing them. And uh, whoever uh, ends up standing out of this LAX and Injustice feud is, is going to be up for some title shots. Don't, don't forget that the Vaughn Erickson Team Filthy one in there too. Oh, you bet they do. So uh, from there, though, that ended that part of the evening. And we are getting moving forward for the battle riot itself. But before that, some of the guys have to be shown picking their numbers, the lo lethal lottery, we could call it, going in, picking that number out. We get our first look at the judge, EJ Nduka, at this point. He's back there with Alicia Atut, picking his number out. Man, this guy is a tower of a man. Like, talk about looking like a star. You just don't see them built like this guy. Man, as soon as he walked on the screen instantly, I was a fan, and he hadn't even done anything. Yeah, he cuts an imposing figure. They announced him at six foot eight, and he's got to be north of 260 pounds somewhere. He, he's been a professional football player in the past. He's obviously been a bodybuilder. This guy looks like a million bucks, and uh, I just was so excited to see him in action in Battle Riot and in some matches in the future in MLW. Yeah, and it seemed like he was pleased with the number that he drew. So obviously we knew he was going to be somewhere in the middle of the pack, or somewhere in the battle riot out of 40 different men. Uh, we would wait to find that out pretty soon. Uh, but as he was uh, talking there, he was cut off by Contra Unit uh, coming in to cut a promo. Uh, very good promo, as always, from the members of Contra. But the one thing I pick out from this that I really like, we said it last season where there was a couple of promos from Mods Kruger that sounded like the voice had been toned down to make it sound more scary. This one had a much clearer Mods Kruger promo on it, and I liked it. I liked his voice as it is. It's imposing enough. He's a big man. It sounds right coming out of him. This was good with me. I like this, Bob Smokes. What are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, Mods Kruger's previous promos, I could never really understand them with the voice uh, modulation effect going on there. But it's good to hear what the man himself has to say. He's the black hand of Contra. He's one of their hired guns uh, specifically to keep Hammerstone away from uh, their MLW champion, Fatu. And uh, I'm looking for big things from Mads Kruger in Battle Riot. Yeah, me too, man. Uh, from there, Kevin Koo and Filthy Tom Lawler are going to pick their lethal lottery numbers. Uh, they seem to have a system or filthy Tom Lawler's come up with a bit of a system, a certain way to roll the numbers to make sure you get the right ones. And it must've worked because when Kevin Coop picks his, seems very pleased with his position. But then uh, Tom Lawler goes to pick and uh, he claims the one he picked out was a practice pick there, Papa's folks. A little bit of comedy involved yeah. here, but good comedy from uh, Tom Lawler for sure. Tom's going to always try and wiggle out of a tight situation somehow, but uh, sometimes he, he makes it, sometimes he doesn't. This time he got stuck with a low number and uh, not good strategy-wise in one of these 40-man uh, battle royals. 
You got that right. And then in comes EJ and Duca really getting highlighted on this MLW Battle Riot program. He interrupts uh, Tom Lawler. And this one, this this got really funny, but in a good way, because Tom Lawler turned around said, mentioning that uh, this isn't a courthouse. What are you with a judge of or whatever that I'm the law around here because law is in my name. Yeah. I love that bit. That was a great bit. It was fun, made sense. And when Nduka pushes forward towards Kevin Koo and Tom Waller and they chicken shit it out of there, I mean, it made their new star look really powerful against two guys. I mean, again, Tom Waller, I mean, this is a former champ, former winner of the battle riot here. And Nduka's chasing them off. I mean, this looked great from all parties. It's what they needed to do. It's what EJ and Nduka needed to really give them a rub. It worked for me. And Duca, his main thing is his, uh, his, his appearance. He's so tremendously massive and he looks great. He's got gigantic muscles. This is what they'll highlight in MLW. I mean, he's probably going to be over, you know, before a lot of his matches start just on his uh, impressive physical uh, appearance alone. So, yeah, they're going to highlight that for sure. And a good move by that. And Duca looking great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes up in the battle ride. We're going to talk about that right away once he enters. So how we're going to work this so everyone knows, this is a 40-man battle royal. And the, I guess the rules, so to speak, for MLW, this is win by pinfall, by submission, or throwing an opponent over the top and both feet hitting the floor. Similar to most battle royals that most people know, just with the inclusion of the pin submissions that they're not maybe as accustomed to. Uh, they did say weapons were capable of being used. I, I guess this would be kind of a no brainer. It's a Royal Rumble. You're not really going to have disqualifications involved in it. So I guess weapons can be used. They weren't used very much in here, Papa Smokes. And the ones that were, it, it was very forgiving because there wasn't a whole lot of it done and nothing was too silly. So I, I had no problem with the use of weapons that they did use in this match to, to a degree. It was like whichever wrestler had, uh, had a weapon as part of their gimmick was allowed to bring it in at the very beginning as an example Savio Vega with the kendo stick kind of thing and Quang with the uh, nunchucks if it's part of your presentation you can bring it in get a little advantage right off the bat and then mostly they seem to not get used after the first little flurry yeah and, it, and that's why I think it worked so well so uh, how we're going to work this for talking about it, though, we're not going to talk about each of the eliminations or anything like that. We could be here all night talking about everything that went down inside the match itself. We both thought the match was great, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in depth. But how we're going to work it, we're going to go down the list, each combatant that took place <coughs> in this battle royal. And we are going to talk about their impact, I guess, on the battle royal itself, uh, what we thought of their showing and some of the things that stood out for us. And just kind of talk a little bit about that here tonight. So very first uh, entrant into this one, of course, Davey Richards. So, you know, big name that they've acquired in MLW, Davey Richards, they're really going to have to give it his all starting at number one in this thing. And he's going to start it off with filthy Tom Waller, who drew number two. This is a very, very strong showing for the first two combatants in this particular match. And the first two spots are always very important to uh, start warming up the crowd and show some good action, have a little mini a match in there, a little two-man singles match to start it off before uh, before the ring gets crowded. And uh, yeah, those first two entrants, as we've seen in many Royal Rumbles in the past as well, quite important to uh, establishing the, the rhythm of the match. Yeah. And man, the rhythm of the match, they did uh, get going really well. Uh, these two back and forth with the technical work, the submission work and stuff like that, just a beautiful start to the first minute of the battle riot uh, done very nicely between Davey Richards and Tom Lawler and made me think that I would not have any problem seeing these two in a one-on-one -on -one contest sometime down the road in MLW. And, and they will for sure. And uh, Davey Richards, we've all, uh, I know I've seen most of his work as a tag team with the American Wolves, but uh, he, he's a competent uh, chain wrestler. He's got a, he's got a, good body he's got a good look he's got uh, a wide range of uh, move set and all that kind of stuff he's really quite good so I think this is an excellent guy to ha have in MLW he'll be able to go with anybody on the roster and make them look good yeah you bet he will man so entrant number three TJP somebody who was highlighted very much during the uh, the restart of MLW 
uh, fusion there. I uh, had him his uh, problems with Boo Kudel, but he comes in and immediately goes and takes over and starts pulling off the submission work too, getting technical with the two boys get, that were already pulling the technical match. And this thing continues down the road of uh, technical action. Yeah, and this is the way to book a battle royal too. I think you put some of those uh, guys in at the very beginning while there's still room in the ring for them to do some stuff. <clears throat> With TJP, you're going to get some flashy aerial moves and some nice looking stuff. But once the ring gets filled up, as we saw by by the time there was 15 guys, there was no there had been no eliminations yet, and and they were using kind of a small ring for such a big event too. Is it got pretty crowded in there at times? So I think it's in order to lay the match like this out, you might want to put some of the more uh, the more uh, smooth moving and aerial kind of guys in at the beginning so they can do their stuff with uh, w with still room to do it in the ring and not uh, not 15 other hulking guys uh, taking up room in the ring. Yeah, you bet, man. Um, so after TJP enters, we got Lee Moriarty, who is another new face to MLW, announced her in the draft. I did forget to mention him at the top of the show, but Lee Moriarty I did uh, check into after the announcement. Uh, works uh, PPW UWFI, who we know uh, is another company that we've been checking out because our uh, good buddy Robert Martyr, uh, who we talked to earlier this year, uh, worked over there with them. And man, this this kid's got some skill. I liked what I saw from him. Uh, he come in, he be very flashy off the start. Got this thing really uh, energized up. Uh, you know, picked the match up, I guess, from that technical aspect and really got the uh, crowd pumping a little bit. A good look in for the first uh, minute of Lee Moriarty here in MLW. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, I, I'm not familiar with him, but this is my first look, but uh, favorable in that way. Yeah, uh, definitely check up check out some of his stuff at uh, PPW UWFI. I think you'd like some of the stuff you'd see over there too. And a lot of the guys that are in the matchup here in the Battle Riot did feature in that uh, company as well too. Great company doing some really interesting stuff with the wrestling over there. Uh, so after Lee Moriarty, we got uh, what we thought was one of the Von Erics coming down to the ring, uh, announced as yeah. Lance Von Erich, uh, maybe also known as Rick Von Erich. I've got written down here is what the announcers kept saying, but really, this was Kit Osborne playing a little prank. Yeah, I don't know Osborne, but it is funny because uh, I remember in the 80s when uh, the Von Erichs were huge in Texas and, and uh uh, the oldest brother, David, had passed away, and they wanted a new young Von Eric, so they introduced Lance Von Eric, their cousin. No re actual familial relation. They just got a good-looking young star and uh, brought him into the fold, and obviously poking a little fun at the Von Eric brothers about that. <laughs> that's good. You know, I, that's a good piece of information I did not know, and, you know, it makes more sense now, and hopefully people will get to go back and have a look at that because, Thinking of it now, that's that's a good way to introduce this Kit Osborne. I think that's quite comical. It could become a nice little insider joke, and uh, with, they could really have fun with that. I like how MLW play on a lot of that old school stuff like that. They don't ignore the past. They uh, they embrace it and make it fun. So from there, um, after he got in, I mean, Kit Osborne. Well, let, let's just talk about him for a minute. I mean, he's he's a speedy guy. He's He's fast, but man, he got tossed around this ring quite a bit on this evening. I mean, he was there to take some bumps, and he took some good bumps in this one. Yeah, he's a bumper for sure, and that that's also a valuable guy for any wrestling company, especially in a battle royal. Yeah, you bet, man. Uh, King Mo was up next, so I mean, King Mo, the MMA fighter, that a legitimate badass. This guy, I mean, he looks like a badass. He looks like he can kick the shit out of anybody he comes across. He comes up in there, and man, he's tossing guys around like rag dolls right off the start. And this guy is—he's something, King Mo. What do you what do you think of him in this one? Yeah, I like King Mo. I I, I like the way he entered this and the way they had him booked to enter. But uh, King Mo, just to my eyes doesn't quite look completely comfortable with the professional wrestling style yet. He looks like he's, uh, he's a little nervous in there. It looks like he's a little unsure of what's going on sometimes, but he'll come along. I have no doubt of that. Oh, for sure, man. They obviously see big things in him and they want to make sure that he stays there. So good on them. 
Uh, up yeah. next, heavyweight hustle, yeah. Calvin Tankman entering this one. So now the ring really starting to get full as heavyweight hustle makes his way down. And as you said, yeah, this thing kept building. Nobody was getting eliminated. And Tankman gets in there and he starts just fucking smashing guys. He was kicking ass left and right. Uh, this would be expected. I mean, Calvin Tankman was pushed uh, right up to that title match near the end of MLW Fusions uh, last season. So again, we'd expect heavyweight hustle to come out and really make an impact on this match and a huge impact he made. Yeah. And just on a related note, I was, I was uh, recently watching some matches uh, from WWE of Keith Lee, and it was striking me uh, uh, that Tankman uses that big guy uh, style better than, than Keith Lee does, I think. Like, Tankman's really got that down in, in using his strength and his weight and his power. He does a better flying uh, uh, shoulder tackle off the ropes the way he... Uh, knocks the guy all the way across the ring. And uh, there are other guys using the uh, the big heavy guy uh, shtick in wrestling, but uh, uh, none better than Tankman, I think. And, and he's still in the beginning of his career. So that's a really good sign. Yeah, I mean, he wears it well. And that's a that's a good comparison to look at in, in terms of Keith Lee and everything. And I agree. And I think, uh, honestly, in my personal opinion, uh, Keith Lee's worst thing is when he starts talking, I don't believe him as much, but when Tankman talks, I believe this kid, I believe he's got the ambition. I believe he wants to beat people up and become a champion kind of thing. And that's what I expect from a professional wrestler. And I think why I'll gravitate more to watching Kelvin Tankman's work personally. Yeah. He sounds hungry. Eh? Yeah. Uh, after Tankman, we got a first look in at Ares. And Ares, somebody who's brought in to, uh, I believe the uh, official signing will be that he's working with Azteca Underground, uh, Lutra, uh, one of the new faces of Luchador so that are going to be coming to MLW. <clears throat> but he getting a look in with the MLW crowd. What do they call him? The the King of Strange Style or something like that? Yeah. I believe was what yeah. it was. Um, it, it's interesting. I, I'm curious to see how this uh, Azteca Underground stuff starts out. Uh, I do enjoy some Lucha Libre wrestling and stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't always perfectly blend with everything else, but MLW does a good job of blending, as they call it, fusion for a reason. They do a good job of blending the different styles and making it work. And of course, Aries comes in and he's he's doing his moves and the, all the Luchador type stuff and everything. And there was guys there that could work with him that made it look great at the same time. So he was able to pull off some great moves there with guys that knew what they were doing and able to allow him to get that, get that in for sure. And I also like Lucha as well as a style, but I, I think I like it better when it is fused with uh, another uh, style of professional wrestling, such as what we have in MLW too. Um, sometimes watching an entire card of Lucha can be a little bit too much, but uh I, I like the way these guys come in, do a few high spots, and then slow it all down. You get to see some of their big moves as soon as they enter the ring, and then uh, and then uh, they, then they go to bumping and some other stuff after that. But yeah, I thought the King of Strange style was looking awesome. He's also a bumper and a seller, obviously too, and doing a nice job of it. Yeah, great, great looking at Aries. Uh, speaking of Lucha, though, uh, out next, Gringo Loco. And surprisingly, for all the shit I talked about this guy on our show before, he got one of the bigger pops of the entire night, Papa Smokes. He was getting a good chant going yeah. for that crowd in Philly. And he had a good match, too. I thought his appearance was good. Uh, uh, Gringo Loco is what he is, and I get that. And he's kind of a mid to lower card job guy in a, in a certain sense he he's had his little winning runs before but uh i thought he did the did the trick perfectly and all of his stuff came off nicely too and it was a good showing for gringo loco yeah it really was i mean everything he, he laid in everything really nice i mean he come in he come in and uh just doing doing the flips they ended up with the double pele over to lawler or to lawler and i can't remember who else i think it might have been richards even in the corner there kind of taking the two of them out in one shot i mean it, it was nicely done i mean it was good but then uh and is it... loco here's where we get a little bit fun pop smokes we're going to talk about our boy zenshi number 10 into this matchup yeah and, Talk about yeah. a show stealer. I mean, Senshi with all yeah. the all the best points of the entire evening just about inside that battle riot. 
oh god where do you start i mean there's the throwing him onto the announce table but of course he's not eliminated because he's laying on the announce table and he's bouncing his way back into the ring uh that that's just one i take it from there you got some more to talk about too so uh, he did a drop kick from the top rope coast to coast but not on the same side of the ring as the guy across diagonally yeah. which is <laughs> quite a huge distance man like and he nailed that. And then Zen, she had that other spot where we've seen this one once before, I think somewhere, but thrown out and landing on his hands and walking on his hands and getting back into the ring because his feet didn't touch. Yeah, it just goes to show we were right all along about Zen. She, uh, he, he is a, a, a job guy. He is a developmental talent or whatever, but man, the guy's got some moves and he's really, really does them good. I enjoy watching him every single time I see him. His athleticism is phenomenal. There was also the one spot where they threw him over the top and he landed on his <coughs> hands on the apron of the ring, like that narrow piece of apron yeah. where one little slip and yeah. he would have fallen down. But no, he's holding himself there and he ends up lifting onto one single hand and doing a 360 spin kick through the bottom rope to his opponent's legs, taking him out. I mean, shit, man, that was great. I loved every minute of it. Yeah, Zenji, amazing. I always love his, love his stuff. Yeah, fun guy and great showing. Uh, and then again, the the uh, high-flying luchador type style guys keep coming. And uh, our first look in it, Aram, Aramis, I believe is how it's pronounced. Again, another luchador picked up for Azteca Underground and coming in there, a great uh, look, great bumps, uh, got some really nice looking moves in there too, especially now that he had a mix of lucha style wrestlers in there as well too. They were able to start pulling off a few of the well-known lucha moves that could be done when you're trained in that type of style. And Gringo Local helped to sell a lot of those in that particular sense too, really making those new guys look good. So uh, in my opinion, another good look in at a new guy, Aramis. Uh, great job. And it helps to debut some of those uh, Lucha Underground uh, or uh, uh, Lucha Underground and Azteca Underground uh, uh, stars on a nice big show like this. Bring them in, get a whole bunch of eyeballs on them. Everybody that likes MLWs was watching Battle Riot for sure. And then you get a nice introduction to some of those new dudes and then they're not so new next time you see them and, and you have an idea of what to expect and who you like. And this is just another good example of it. Uh, Huracaranas all around the ring, high flying stuff, uh, lucha style and flavor all throughout the show. Really good stuff. Yeah, it was awesome, man. Uh, up next, I believe we finally got our first look in at the suplex assassin, Alex Kane. And he come on there and he had one different suplex for every single guy in that entire ring, including Calvin Tankman, heavyweight hustle, taking the German suplex from Alex Kane. Damn, I didn't know if he was going to get all of it on that one, but he got all of it. Tankman going over hard and Alex Kane looking like a goddamn superhero. I loved it. For sure. And and attempting the German on a big guy like Calvin is a dangerous proposition because if you don't get him all the way over, he lands on your head and your face and your chest. Like that's a we've seen that one go wrong before in the ring when it's a big guy like that. And if you don't fall far enough, he's landing right on your own head and when your head's on the mat. So uh really, really uh, courageous thing to try. Uh Kane one of the guys I was really looking forward to seeing debut, and uh, he didn't disappoint, man. This guy's going to be good in some matches, especially against some of the other uh, stars in MLW that have that sort of uh, amateur wrestling and MMA-type background, such as Team Filthy and uh, and King Mo and the boys. Uh, Alex Kane is going to be awesome in that. This was another case where he didn't really have very much room to do his stuff because there was yeah 15 dudes in the ring or something but uh we got to see uh you know his bread and butter this the, the all the suplexes he knows how to do and just thrilling that this guy i have high hopes for alex kane i think he's going to be really good no oh, me too man uh, if from the moment they mentioned him i was like yeah this guy i like this guy we've seen some uh, social media messages from him that got us even more hyped about his debut and yeah like you said did not disappoint yeah. I loved every second of Alex Kane looking forward to watching him in MLW start getting into those one-on-one -on -one matches 
man, they've got a, a, a star looking roster to me now. Like it looked sharp before, but now with all these new guys coming in and the way they presented them in this battle, riot, <clears throat> Hell yeah, man, this is going to look good for MLW's future. So after uh, Alex Kane, so now we've got the middleweight champion, Myron Reed heading down to the ring. So Myron Reed going to enter the fold. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Myron Reed's a great talent. We've seen this kid grow over the last little while. Um, you, I know you've been watching him for quite a few years already, and he just continues to get better. And I, you got to see, even on the microphone earlier in the night when he was uh, demanding that match with Cesar Garan, he handled himself like a seasoned pro on that microphone there. Uh, he's really starting to get it. His facials are starting to look better every day. Um, this, uh, this kid is a great talent for MLW, and there's no doubt that they're going to continue to keep him at the top of their roster. Yeah, I think Byron Reed, just uh, even even a year and a half or two years ago, was looked to me like he was at the crossroads of, are you going to be a major star in this company or are you going to kind of go by the wayside and, and, and not really accomplish too much? To me, it, it, to me it, it, it appeared as though he just gained a good sense of confidence because now his in-ring work is immaculate everything he tries and he tries some pretty difficult stuff but when he tries it he lands it good his promos are also flawless so it just seems like he's got a swagger he's got a confidence behind him now and i just think the sky's pretty much the limit in this company for myron reed after his uh, middleweight title run i'm guessing that uh uh, injustice will have a tag team title run at some point in the future and uh it's everything's looking good for Myron Reed. Yeah, and he looks sharp in this one as well, too. Uh, from there, after Myron Reed, we got Savio Vega. We haven't seen Savio Vega since that. Uh, I, I don't want to call it a match, Bob, because we said it before on Ring Respect. That wasn't much of a match. It was an on-location thing that occurred between him and King Muertes, uh, that uh, fight out in Mexico or whatever, where Savio was essentially buried as far as we know but here he was he's back again just as good old-fashioned wrestling dictates Savio Vega entering this match coming in with the Singapore pay cane like you mentioned earlier before we started talking on this one and yeah I mean that was it he highlighted it with some Singapore cane moves and after that he went but he did what he needed to do he kind of <laughs> took the took the bumps from the other guys he was there to put some guys over and he did a really good job being that uh, seasoned veteran and uh, looking out for the young talent in the company as well, too. Yeah, that's exactly it. I think Savio Vega will be most valuable to MLW, not so much as an in-ring performer at this time, but as a experienced guy. And am I mistaken about this, Munson? I, I think Savio Vega might have been an agent in WWF or, sorry, WWE for a while there. So that shows that he... Uh, has an interest in laying out matches, uh, listening to the talent, working with the talent, and uh, and using his vast uh, experience to help the overall product. It's a win-win for MLW, I think. Yeah, I agree. So that's uh, nice to see him in there. And then we get the other half of Injustice, Jordan Oliver, making his way down, entering this one. Uh, Jordan Oliver, as we've said before, is starting to look better, definitely on his ring work. Uh, he's definitely uh, built himself up. He's definitely a lot, uh, a lot tougher looking than he did uh, kind of when he started out. That's for sure. He's put on a little bit of put a little bit of girth there. Uh, at the same time, even on his promo earlier and stuff like that, he's kind of got a bit of a smile, and this smile doesn't seem to go away. It doesn't matter what his emotion is, and he keeps bringing this smile up, pops folks. And I'm like, one of these days, one of the boys is going to slap that smile off your face, and you're going to realize why you're not supposed to yeah. have it there. He needs to toughen up a little bit, uh, but I mean, it's age and experience, I think, too. He's, he's a young kid. He's still uh, working into it, and he's doing a good job. I'm not I'm not trying to knock Jordan Oliver. I like him. I think there's potential there for him, and I think there's just a few of those things that I think he'll get over time, but it seemed like he almost was having a little bit of a laugh when LAX and him were kind of getting into the little bit of a heated talk earlier in the night. Yeah, he's always got that smarmy heel little uh, smirk on his face all the time i'm surprised he can still smile after his match with jacob fatu a few months ago but uh yeah uh, like you said uh oliver's coming along 
he's a work in progress, but he's definitely gotten better. And uh, <clears throat> I think we'll see his best days over the next couple of years in MLW. Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, and a decent showing in this one too. Up next, a surprise entrant that I know absolutely nothing about. I'm not sure if you do either. The Beast Man. I've never heard of this guy before, Pop yeah. Smokes. I didn't go and investigate to find out if he was under any other name previously in another company. I just enjoyed watching the Beast Man, this random guy inside the ring, tearing it up and looking like one girth of a human being. Yeah, I, I was chuckling when the Beast Man came out too. I don't recognize him. I almost thought it was that guy Perot that we watched a couple matches from after the restart. <clears throat> just with another gimmick going on but it's not him so I, I don't know who that guy was uh, um, kind of just a guy to fill uh, one of those 40 spots I suspect but uh, he didn't do badly and he's a big giant guy and uh, he, he had a he had size and presence in that uh, match and that's about all I got to say about the beast man yeah pretty much um, so after the beast man LAX come out and I guess this ended up counting as entrance 17 and 18, even though the count didn't go the other minute. They just kind of skipped the extra additional count on this one because both uh, Riviera or Rivera, sorry, and Slice Boogie both entered the match at the exact same time. Uh, LAX, I, I think, is a great addition to the MLW roster. It'll really beef up the tag team division and everything like that. Um, Slice Boogie's got a stupid name with a great look. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of like his name a little bit. I've been following this guy for a little while now, and I, I like, uh, I think he's got potential, potential. And also, I saw that he was working with uh, Billy Corgan's NWA recently, but yeah. I, I'm more glad being in NW these days. I think it's a good spot for him. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do. LAX, obviously, uh, a well known established team. So I think this is going to be great with uh, Conan coming back. I know we talked, you talked a lot about Conan's return uh, to MLW uh, when we were talking about last season. So now that he's back with LAX, I think that really beefs up the roster beautifully. Uh, up next, Matt Cross, who I guess is re or re coming back to MLW. I think, guess he was there a long time ago because he's this guy is a seasoned veteran. Uh, so he used to work for yeah. them and now making his return to MLW and really getting a nice look in there. I mean, he got a lot of moves in, got to really highlight himself for a while. So give it, letting people really know, who, remember who he is, I guess, or for fans who hadn't seen him before, I get the first look in at him. This is another guy that was working for NWA too, uh, while we were reviewing it too. Do you remember Matt Cross? And, uh, <clears throat> he's a longtime wrestling veteran. Yeah. He's never of uh, the kind of level that he's at on the indies right now but i think the guy's really good this is a guy that you want to have if you're setting up a wrestling federation because he's a veteran you can have him in a winning position or you can have him doing jobs he's got really really good ring work um as a big face the fans like him a lot too his his wrestling is 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 quite uh unflawed uh he's got a lot of good shit in there so I, i'm loving that matt cross has been i don't know if he's signed by mlw yeah. or just making a shot but i hope he is there because uh, he he's an excellent baby face to have on your roster and he is officially signed it was announced during the draft that they had signed him so he is officially on right. the MLW right. roster. so we get to look forward to matt cross in action with mlw coming up <clears> so that'll be great uh no so we're getting to the halfway point number 20 buku dow making his way uh I, I, I don't know if this guy got quite as heavy a pop as I thought maybe he would for what, the way they pushed him and stuff like that. He did get a pretty decent pop, especially once he kind of pumped the crowd out. Once he got that shot in on TJP, throwing him into the barrier outside the ring and kind of pumped the crowd up from there, he really got some of those fans up out of their seat, which was nice to see. But I kind of thought for all the push that they did with this guy that maybe Buku Dell would have come out with a, a much larger pop in that Philly crowd. I have to agree with you there. Uh, it was good the way they did it that he entered and immediately ran into TJP on the on the floor before he even got in the ring. That was nice just to bring up the, the, the pretty decent feud that they had uh, some months back, which Buku Dao ended up being victorious in. But uh, 
as for his performance in the rest of the battle royale, I didn't really see him that much, or I didn't see that that many of his moves. So he didn't come out of this looking like a highlighted star, but I think he will be in the future. This is another guy that's just basically starting out being uh, wrestling on TV and stuff. So he's got some development and, and a ways to go yet, but I don't think he'll have any problem with it. He, he looks good and, and he's got all the skills and all the tools to get there. Yeah, for sure. I'm uh, going to pause there for one second. I'm just going to turn on some lighting. It's getting dark in here. <clears throat> Okay, so after Abuku Dell, then we had Marshall Von Erich entrant number 21. And yeah, this really picked things up. Marshall Von Erich, high energy coming in there, kicking some ass like a good old Texan boy would. Man, his showing was just awesome in this battle riot from the moment he walked in till the to the end where he finally was eliminated, which was very close to the ending. He went just about the whole distance from here. Um, great showing for Marshall Von Erich and really highlighted his ability inside that squared circle. Yeah, and, and you and I have talked about how we like Marshall Von Eric a lot. He's kind of the more the loose cannon of the two parts, the uh, hot-headed one that's ready to jump into action all the time. And he was clawing guys like it was going out of style. He likes to do the claw and then the sort of choke slam type move with the claw and the head there. And it, having great success with it, I think he pinned at least one guy with it and... Uh, and gave a, a bunch of other guys a lot of trouble with that too. And Marshall Von Erich, a, a favorite of mine in MLW. Yeah, huge and great showing. So yeah, I loved every bit of it. But then talking about a great showing right after Marshall Von Erich, we follow it up with and EJ Nduka finally making his in-ring debut for MLW. Jesus Christ, did he come in, guns ablaze and pop smokes. He was hitting stuff that just looked incredible. Everything he laid down looked painful, looked like it hurt. He started cleaning up this ring like this. The ring was full of dudes. And before long, this ring was cut down to a select few because the judge decided to put his footmark on their foot stamp on this match. 12 eliminations total out of a 40-man Royal Rumble. Man, EJ Nunduka being pushed like a star, looks like a star. I'm a fan, looking forward to everything this dude does. Yes, I am a huge fan. Got to say, I'm marking out for EJ Nunduka. And rightly so. And, and yeah, like you said, they're obviously going to smash him over big time. And I think they should, and I think it'll work. And uh, it's always fun in battle royals like this when the, the ring gets crowded and there's like a few too many guys in it that you just bring in one of your big guys and he starts chucking people out. This was a really good moment and, and it got him over for sure. And uh, EJ is going to be a, a star in the company as, as, as long as he wants to uh, uh, with a good pr presentation and a good push like that. Yeah. Fantastic. Loved it, man. Um, Entrant number 23, this was a fun one, Kim Chi. <laughs> I don't know yeah. how many people watching know who Kim Chi is, but very <laughs> comical. This was the, the manager of the Ugandan giant Kamala. Uh, you're usually his, uh, his tamer, I guess, is what they called him in the WWF in the 90s. And yeah. But uh, yeah, Kim Chi entering this one and exiting it just about as quickly as he entered it too. Yeah, yeah. I have to admit I was surprised uh... Since Kamala's been long gone for a long time, uh, 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 seeing Kim Chi was interesting, but uh, he had the outfit, he had the little uh, riding crop, the little hand whip there that he used to whip Kamala with to keep him in line. And uh, I don't really want to speak about it uh, uh, publicly on here, but I feel like I recognized Kim Chi. I'm not 100% sure of that, but I, I, I have a little theory as to who that might have been under there. Maybe I'll talk to you off the air about that. I don't want to... I don't like to be the guy that tries to uh, pop the bubbles uh, that have been created on here, but uh, I, I think I might have recognized Kim Chi. <laughs> <laughs> so I bet you uh, had a little bit of a pop at the next entrant here, the surprise Zicky Dice entering the MLW Battle Riot. I yeah. know talk, you've talked very highly about this guy. We've reviewed some of the work he did in the NWA there that we got to see. Uh, Zicky Dice entered this one, and man, he was great inside this battle riot. I had a lot of fun watching his work. He laid in some nice stuff. He took some great hits from some of the other boys. Um, great show, and I, I hope Zicky Dice is uh, 
sticking around. The one thing I like about Zicky Dice is that uh, he kind of presents a scumbag uh, character, a, a guy that's completely uh, self-interested and all that stuff. And uh, but it it if you read uh, the internet and and other things, it kind of seems like he works that gimmick all the time or maybe he just is that guy but when he came in a lot of wrestlers looked like they wanted to kick his ass real bad because he's a dick of a guy and whether 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 or not that's true it worked beautifully in this match and uh he was one of those guys where he never got a a, a breath to himself every time he turned around there was another guy just wanting to kick his ass so uh this was nice what was that spot in the middle where he was pulling that uh, thing out of his mouth, that big, long uh, string? I, I didn't understand what that meant, uh, the little kind of magic thing where he was pulling the the long uh, pink ribbon out of his mouth. Or something. Do you know what that was supposed to be or why he did that? Yeah, I have no idea, man. So hopefully if any of our viewers know what that was about, feel free to let us know in the comment section below or shout us out on social media. But uh, yeah, I had no idea. So I didn't quite uh, pay too much attention from that one. Um, so yes, from there though, Jesus, I can't even see my own writing anymore for uh, number 25 here. Pops. Oh, Kevin Koo. Jeez, man, I gotta, gotta learn how to write a little bit better. So Kevin Koo was up next, number 25 into the battle riot. Kevin Koo sporting some interesting... Uh, purple hair these days so really standing out from the pack from the standard look of most of the guys inside this ring uh kevin Koo got in there got some nice stuff in for sure uh, of course uh getting in there to be able to team up with his boy tom waller for a while and everything um kind of surprised that uh, dominic gabrini not uh present on this thing at all i uh, wondering if they maybe he was priorly prior booked or an injury is plaguing him or something like that it's kind of Interesting to see just Kevin Koo and uh, Tom Lawler within this one. Yeah, it's funny about uh, Dominic Garini as well, because him and Kevin Koo worked together uh, on the indies as well. Uh, in their other bookings, I've noticed uh, also as violence is forever sort of thing. So Garini may be, may be injured, maybe elsewhere, maybe booked somewhere else. But uh, yeah. I, I like Kevin Koo. I wasn't quite sure at first, but uh, I, this is another guy that I think is starting to look more comfortable in a pro wrestling ring. He's had his martial arts uh, fights in the past and uh, kickboxing and all that, but uh, it looks like he's getting uh, uh, comfortable with the pro wrestling style. Yeah, I got to agree. Uh, so after Kevin Koo, we got Casey Navarro. And I got to ask, I'm I hearing a lot about Casey Navarro saying like this was a good pickup from MLW and I'm not knocking the showing. I saw a decent showing out there. A lot of great bumping, a lot of great moves from Casey Navarro. Do you know who Casey Navarro is outside of MLW? Like seen much of Casey Navarro's work? Cause I am completely unfamiliar. I, I don't, I, his name is familiar to me, but I've never seen any of his matches before. He looked okay. He's very, very small and very thin and you notice that he got bumped around big time because the guys can fling him around like a small child sort of thing that's also a, can be a, a valuable guy to have on your roster too because he can make your big guys look even way stronger and uh, he took uh, hellacious bumps in this too so good job by KC I'm interested to see more yeah me too man got my attention uh, after KC Navarro we had uh, Lance, uh, Lance and Anawaya. Uh, I'm really bad with these names, but anyways, the son of head shrinker Samu here. Uh, and you can tell right away when he walks out that this is a member of that family and uh, a good look in. I mean, obviously new to the MLW roster. And I, I, I'm going to say great pickup because I know the history of the family and just about every single one of them turns out to be a star. So I think that with time, we will be talking about possibly another star coming out of this family. What do, what do you think go right off the hop, though? Yeah, I obviously recognized his name and all that. I knew he was part of that family. And uh, I didn't see too much that totally blew me away from this guy. But I, I also n know that he's probably been trained so extremely well by the Anawahi family and uh, and uh, in that their whole system. He's probably had... Uh, brothers and sisters and cousins and such to wrestle since he was a small child so i uh, again he 
didn't really capture my attention in this match, but I, I, I'm going to watch him and I have the feeling he's going to be good. Yeah, give it time. Again, like this match wasn't the standout or anything like that, but I don't think that was the point. We had a lot of guys that needed to stand out in this. We couldn't have everybody start overshadowing. So give him time. I think he's got a ways to go. But again, knowing the history of the family, I'd be surprised if we're not having a conversation in two years that is talking about him on a higher level. Uh, from there, the next entrant was L.A. Park. Surprisingly, man, he sure slimmed down as the announcers made it quite apparent. I mean, at this point, I think everybody knew something was up. This was not the actual L.A. Park. No offense to L.A. Park or nothing, but it seemed like uh, somebody was pulling our leg a little bit. And sure enough, he gets inside the ring. The mask gets flipped off. And sure enough, it's filthy Tom Waller posing as L.A. Park. And he gets himself dumped back over the top <coughs> rope immediately. I mean... Man, Tom Lawler had some fun on this evening, and I got to say, it was a it was a great time watching what he was doing, putting other guys over here tonight. Yeah, uh, some people don't like Lawler for the comedy, but I think he plays the uh, cowardly bully heel quite nicely. He's uh, always trying to avoid some kind of match or some kind of stipulation, and he, it is good that there's a place for that kind of uh, heel in in any company. That's the coward and the bully. And he'll do anything to get out of uh, a tough situation. And that's kind of what he did here, too. He was expecting to maybe win it, even though he came in at number two. But uh, after he got thrown out, he's going to try and cheat and get in there and uh, make it right anyway. So uh, I, I like everything Waller does. Do, do I dare risk saying on here and getting people pissed off at me, but kind of almost, in a sense, an Owen Hart type heel character i mean owen hart was always good at playing the you know the heel that wanted to avoid things and it had a bit of that uh, arrogance and stuff about him i mean I, I even think of tom when he's talking about all his accolades and stuff back to when owen hart would even talk about his slammy awards and stuff like that it was goofy but at the same time you know this guy could twist you up and kick the shit out of you so i mean it's it's funny but at the same time it's got some seriousness a little seriousness behind it and i can accept it it's a good comparison, Munson. I never thought of it that way, but I think you're on to something there. Yeah. So after uh, that happened, uh, we got uh, our first member of Team Contra, and we know that we're going to have a slew of Contra members coming out and not many slots left. So Simon Gotch entering the ring, I uh, mean, making an instant impact. Simon Gotch obviously looking very good, as most of the members of Contra tend to do. Uh, he got in there, laid in some good shit and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, he did exactly what we would expect any member of Contra to do heading into this battle riot. Uh, thoughts on Simon Gotch? Gotch, I thought, looked great in this. Uh, I haven't always been complimentary to him. I know he's an awesome wrestler and martial artist and all that, but I've seen matches, we've reviewed matches on here where he just hasn't really looked good, hasn't looked like himself, but this wasn't one of them. Uh, Gotch looked great in this, and he, he came in like a house on fire, and he had some big strikes and some interesting uh, martial arts style suplexes and all that. And I thought uh, uh, Gotch had quite a good showing. And you knew that once uh, there were so many uh, entrants already in, but nobody from Contra yet. And then they all started coming in. It looks like they stacked the deck in their favor a little bit also and had fed from, uh, you know, between 28 or 30 and 40, they had like seven guys coming yeah. so uh contra up to their old tricks uh stacking the deck i think and uh yeah i thought gotch looked great in this yeah and then yeah speaking of stacking the deck up next to Bari, and you know this guy's always looking sharp coming out there um yeah he's got that fantastic physique he gets in there he lays in his stuff nice i'm i'm always surprised this guy isn't more of a star than he is i mean i like his work i always have liked his work i think this guy maybe deserves more sometimes i and hopefully we'll get to see more of it coming up in mlw as well uh great showing in the battle right yeah more from davaria i'm always interested to see and uh this is a good member of contra that they the newest guy they got to uh, air uh sean davari he looks good he fits the part and he's he's a he's a now a a, a very a strong member of Contra, and uh, I like all of his stuff. I like to see his matches, and uh, he looked good in this. You knew he probably wasn't going to win, but uh, yeah, any uh, soldier to help in Contra's ultimate cause is uh, going to be uh, trouble in a battle royal like that. 
And what's an interesting fact, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Arya Davari, his nephew, has uh, recently been released from his contract over at WWE. So I believe Arya Davari might be a free agent. And again, somebody, he's smaller than Sean Davari, but at the same time, again, a nice look. He's got the uh, similar look to his to his uncle there and everything. And uh, got, he can lay in some good stuff too. So I mean, he might not be a bad find for the middleweight division over in MLW as well. Yeah, maybe we'll have them both there. The, the two would be better than one for sure. Yeah, you bet, man. Um, from there, a surprise entrant, I guess, for some, the blue meanie comes out. And, I mean, I don't want to be me. This guy's been around a long time. I was never a fan of what he does. It, it just personally not a fan of the blue meanie stuff. I mean, all the respect to him for having been doing this for as long as he has and making a career out of it. I know he's got a podcast on MLW radio as well, too. So that's one of the reasons that he was there at a call for Court Bauer to enter the battle riot. And he goes in there, he did what he does. He goes in, he has a little bit of fun, gets the crowd joking around a little bit. He didn't take the spotlight away from anybody or anything like that. He went out there, he made some other guys look good, had a little bit of fun getting back in the ring after all these years. It, it, it was fun. It's in a battle riot. This is exactly what you expect. You expect a few like this. <coughs> oh, ah. Sorry. Is <laughs> height. Thank you. But yeah, the blue mini. I mean, it, it was a fun spot, especially here. It really lifted the crowd. You could tell the crowd there in Philly really likes this guy quite a bit. Yeah, it's interesting for me too because I remember uh, watching some of uh, Blue Meanie stuff back in the 90s when that was a thing and the Blue World Order and all that and, and you know my tastes in wrestling months and this was not this was not something I liked either but since those days I've, I've found out that the Blue Meanie's actually like a pretty cool guy and a nice guy and he has a healthy respect for the history of wrestling he's really into uh, some good old shit, the kind of stuff that I like to watch and that uh, I know that you like to watch as well. And uh, I have a lot of respect for Brian, the guy. Uh, uh, I'm not sure about his character so much, but I know there's a good guy behind that. So I, I'm willing to, uh, you know, let some of his antics slide. And, you know, with that having been said, it was kind of a pleasure and a, a shock to see him in this too. And I had a good time with it. Uh, I think he's a good guy. Yeah, the spot was right for it, so you can't you can't be annoyed by it. It was it was fun and it was good for him. Uh, next up, we had a Kuro Kwan, who is another member of Contra, hasn't been seen, been on the uh, injured shelf, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, getting in here, laying in some some stuff right off the hop. I uh, didn't have uh, an incredible showing because there wasn't a lot of match left to go, but got an opportunity to kind of get reseen by anybody who had watched previously and was familiar with a Kuro Kwan, and maybe got him all, also in front of some new eyes as well too. Yeah, I was glad to see Akiro Kwan back. This was one of the guys I was looking forward to watching uh, when he first debuted for a Contra unit. Now, that must be two years ago now. Um, he didn't have a long or a, or a particularly uh, top rank kind of run with them. He is one of their foot soldiers, so to speak, and they throw him in there whenever they need a guy or a tag team partner or something to get the job done, but we always speak to the international flavor of MLW. I like this guy. Uh, he's got the whole Asian thing going on. He looks cool. He's got the tattoos. He's got the hairdo. He's kind of like a gang guy or like a gangster guy type thing. I follow him on social media. His workouts look intense. He does all kinds of martial arts stuff. His body weight exercises are just amazing. The chin-ups and all the uh, acrobatic stuff he does for his workouts. I'm a fan of Aikiro Kwan, and I'm glad to see him back in an MLW ring. I, I hope to see some more prominent matches from him in the near future, and uh, I, I think he's going to be good stuff. Uh, uh, Joseph Samuel will use him to his uh, ultimate uh, advantage. You bet he will, man. Uh, up next, we had Ross Von Eric entering the fold. So Ross Von Eric uh, entering at 33 inside this matchup and getting a uh, Getting quite a bit in. I mean, he was high energy right off the hop. We know he is. Uh, Ross Von Eric is always an energetic guy inside that squared circle. He laid in some really nice things. Uh, him and his brother getting to be able to team up and do some moves together and everything. Uh, great showing. I, I, we obviously love the Von Erics. There's not a whole lot to that I can add to this whole thing. It's Ross Von Eric. He's going to look great, and he did look great. 
yeah, Ross is a, a fan favorite, a crowd favorite, such a good looking guy. And he's got tons of good stuff in the ring. He also needs to just build up to an experience of more matches, I think too, before he gets completely comfortable looking in there, but coming along all the time. I, I like both brothers. I, I think I prefer Marshall a little bit, but Ross is awesome too. And, uh, as a unit there, they're an excellent tag team and, and, uh, big crowd favorites. They, you knew that they were probably going to last pretty long in the battle riot. Yeah. And that they did uh, up next, Joseph Samael, who we've seen in promo after promo for the last uh, year since uh, MLW's return now actually entering inside the matchup itself. Uh, this was my first look in at uh, Joseph Samael inside the ring and man, he looks good. I, I like, his, I like his work. I like his promos. I think this guy's fantastic. Uh, again, you mentioned about his love for heavy music. I've got to check the, uh, some of that out as well, too. I like Joseph Samael. This guy is great from start to finish, inside the ring, outside the ring, and even in his personal life, and just him in general. I think this guy is phenomenal. Yeah, me also. There, there's nothing fancy about his ring work. He's a uh... He doesn't have any flashy moves or anything like that. He's all psychology, though. He uh, he's got, he does his rule breaking, and uh, he's always bringing in his spike or his fork or his plastic knife in there. He's based himself off of uh, the old Sheik from Detroit, and uh, he does a nice job of it. And uh, and and he's kind of like the manager type character for uh, Contra too. That you know, if you need them to take a loss without looking too bad, you can you. Can can make Samael eat the pinfall and it's not too too bad and uh, I, I I love him as a character his promo is absolutely awesome and uh, he's great for uh, for uh, Contra and uh, he, he did pretty nicely in this match it laid in a nice camel clutch with the uh, the spike in the in fish booking the mouth and everything too uh, he's a sadist and uh, he's an interesting character in the ring yeah, I'm pretty sure that's when St. Laurent's like, it looks like uh, Samuel's uh, up to some uh, early dental work in this matchup. So, yeah, fun, yeah. fun time. Um, up next, the uh, business really picking up at 35. Alexander Hammerstone entering this in the Philadelphia arena there. The 2300 arena of Philly erupted when Hammerstone's music hit. It was time for the big man to finally get his opportunity. This is what they've been highlighting. Alexander Hammerstone needs to win this matchup in order to get the title shot he's been longing for for so long. That crowd was 110% behind Alexander Hammerstone from the moment his music hit till the end of the match. This guy is over as hell with that audience and with all the MLW audience. And everybody wanted this win. They wanted Hammer to win because this was his opportunity because this has been phenomenal booking on the part of Court Bauer and MLW to build up the want for Hammerstone versus Fat 2 so much that they would take this matchup to have everybody just rally behind Alexander Hammerstone. This was a fantastic showing from him, and we're going to talk more about him, obviously, towards the end here, but just awesome. A smart way to do it, too, is there, there's a couple ways you could have had Hammerstone come out looking like the big guy after this one way would be having him as an early entrant and battling through all kinds of adversity to, towards the end. But the, the way they did it, they had him come in late, nice and fresh, uh, uh, clear the ring a little bit. And uh, that, that was a good way to do it. We didn't have to see him for the whole thing. It was good that he just came in uh, sort of within the last uh, eight or 10 guys there. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's, 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 convincing or more believable that he could win the thing when he comes in a little bit later like that against some competition that's a little bit tired then then you're probably going to set up uh, uh, those later entrants to have some uh, battles against each other too when they're still fresh and we have one or two guys still to mention here that are going to clash with hammerstone at the end of battle riot yeah like uh, the next guy's coming out the sentai death squad and I guess we ended up with an extra couple of members in a sense. Like this was supposed to be one entrant at this point, but both <laughs> members of the Sentai Death Squad entered the matchup itself and it kind of counted. So, I mean, arguably you could say this was a 41 man battle riot at the Battle Riot 3. I mean, it is what it is. The Sentai Death Squad members are there a lot for show, a lot for background and for, you know, those extra guys that they can feed to guys like Alexander Hammerstone and stuff like that. Uh, it works really well. And they did their part in this matchup. 
Yeah, and we've seen Sentai Death Squad before. These definitely weren't the same guys that we've seen in no. matches before. We've seen much smaller guys uh, uh, playing the the role of the masked uh, Death Squad guys. These two guys were really big, and I uh, don't know who they are. There's some kind of uh, preliminary talent that MLW has kicking around or whatever. But yeah, like you say, they they filled their their uh, position quite nicely just by being uh, kind of cannon fodder for some of the good guys and. Uh, but still we're big imposing guys and just more foot soldiers for Contra. Yeah. So up next, uh, this one was kind of a shock. Wang the Ninja entering the MLW fold. Um, this one kind of comical. I remember Quang from back in the old WWF from the 90s. Um, I didn't know if there was ever anything from him outside of the WWF, and I don't know how much of this plays on infringement or if Vince never copyrighted Quang the Ninja back in the day or if adding the word the ninja at the end of his name pretty much takes away all, all rights to the copyright name. But yeah, I mean, it was the fun old school character entering a battle riot and it, it, it was good for the spot that it was. It, it was entertaining. I mean, we could sit here and uncover who's actually underneath the mask of Quang, but forget it. We're going to play it in kayfabe. Quang the Ninja, completely different guy from anybody else on the roster. And a lot of fun to be had with him. Uh, he did what he needed to do. Come in there, have a couple of few spots to pop the crowd to, uh, late in this matchup. And inevitably make the other guys look good in uh, having him eliminated. And was... Quang the Ninja in WWE wasn't that Papa Shango? Like, was that that guy, uh, Charles? No, whatever his uh, last name was. Yeah, no, Who no, was no. it? Uh, Quang the Ninja is Savio Vega. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Okay. Savio pulled double duty, and nice. Savio actually is that character from the WWF too. That was his gimmick okay. prior to be in Savio Vega. Oh yeah, I had the wrong idea. Well, okay, that makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, that's who it was uh, there, and uh, yeah, a fun little nostalgic pop from the '90s kind of thing. I remember watching Quang, <laughs> not thinking he was ever going to make it very far because it was another one of Vince's gimmick characters that came out and usually made it for a few episodes. Yeah. Of WWF superstars and one cover <clears> of the magazine before being dropped. Uh, but from there, we got a few more entrants. Uh, Thirty-eight King Muerta, Muertes comes out, and man, there's just nothing more we can add to this guy. He's fucking fantastic he looks like a million bucks he kicks the shit out of guys and he makes it look fan uh, look phenomenal i love king mortez glad he's sticking around glad he's gonna be part of azteca underground and what a great showing he was uh just the right position in here to make him look like a true threat to this matchup and like there is that slight possibility he could go on to take this thing yeah i i agree he has uh, he gets booked very strongly in mlw and i think that's good his his uh, total presentation and appearance uh, supports that too. He's he's such a side of beef. He's such a huge guy. He's got the cool mask. His uh, his backstory and all that is is scary and excellent. And he came into this uh, battle riot just kicking people's asses. And uh, he made several quick eliminations and a few more in his relatively short time in this match. And uh, King Muerte, yeah, they obviously think quite highly of him in MLW. They're, they're pushing him that way, and uh, I can't help but be along for the ride on that one. Yeah, phenomenal. Um, up next, uh, speaking again, Nassus kicked Gino Medina, who got his ass kicked all over this battle riot. Uh, the young, uh, arrogant yeah. star coming in, uh, looking, looking like a million bucks, but not uh, getting in there like a million bucks. He got tossed around this thing pretty hard by a lot of these very large beefy guys that were still in this matchup. And, uh, Gino, I mean, he did what he needed to do. He went out there, he gave these guys somebody else to toss around, did some good spots, and uh, said, said goodnight, and uh, we'll see more of him, I'm sure, within the middleweight division and stuff with the, uh, you know, who knows with the Caribbean Championship coming up. I don't want to say too much, as there was a, a match for that title that was taped at the, this show that will come up on future episodes of MLW Fusion. But, a uh, lot to be said, Gino Medina, a rising star, but there wasn't much here that they could or should do with him at this moment in this particular match. He did exactly what he needed to do. Yeah, when he first came in, I kind of thought, oh, he's a very uh, late entrant to the late entrant to this battle royal. So maybe he's going to make some noise. Like maybe he's going to be one of the final guys 
perhaps this is part of the, uh, the big push for Gino Medina. It didn't really turn out like that, but uh, still, I think uh, uh, they're right to shine a, a nice bright light on this youngster. Again, he's, he needs to work on a lot of stuff, uh, particularly his promos and all that. But I think with his look and presentation, he could be a big deal. I've, I've uh, tooted his horn before on the, on our MLW reviews in the past and, I'm not 100% sure of it, but I think uh, Medina could be a big guy for their company and for wrestling in general in the future. Yeah, you bet, man. So last but not least, number 40, the big man Mods Kruger finally ending the battle <clears throat> riot. And, you know, at this point, yeah. I'm starting to think this might become the threat. I talked about it before. How would Contra try to screw Hammerstone out of this one again and once again keep us away from that Jacob Fatu and Hammerstone matchup? And I mean, with Mods Kruger entering it in at 40, I had to think for a minute, there was that slight possibility that he takes this thing and uh, yeah. basically holds that over to MLW, saying that Mods uh, Kruger is the next right to the championship and that Hammerstone doesn't get his title this shot. So, And like we were saying before, that's, that's what they brought Mods Kruger in for specifically, it wasn't to uh, have matches against other guys or to go for other titles or to try and be in a tag team for the tag team title no Mads Kruger doesn't give a fuck for any of that stuff he's a hired mercenary and all he does is protect uh Jacob Fatu and and his uh, hold on the championship in fact even more specifically he's to protect Fatu from Alexander Hammerstone so really Kruger is that dangerous kind of enemy in that he's only he's he's only got his eyes on one thing he's He's not distracted by anything else. His only job is to destroy Hammerstone and, and stand a, like a roadblock in his way to the MLW championship. So, yeah, Kruger's very dangerous. Uh, he doesn't care about anything else. He only cares about one guy, and uh, that's got to be tough for Hammerstone. And you saw it once, uh, once there were uh, some more eliminations, these two had a nice little face-off at the end uh, in the ring. Yeah, they sure did, man. And I got to say, outside of the first meeting between Alexander Hammerstone and uh, Mods Kruger, this has been the best Mods Kruger outing. Uh, it might have even been better than the first time we saw him and Hammer lock up. He came out, big man, took over, started throwing guys around, really tossing some tossing some people around, but, uh, imposing his big man skills and stuff like that. And then, like you said, when it came down to just him and Hammerstone, it could have gone either way. <laughs> And man, these two laid it into each other. A nice looking fight between the two of them. Inevitably, obviously, Hammerstone picking up the victory. He's now entitled to that championship spot. Uh, what a phenomenal battle riot this was. I loved every minute of it. Uh, the win was proper. Hammerstone getting that victory finally. And then Hammerstone having fun at the end, doing the posing. I mean, he had the red and the yellow uh the tights on. So, of course, he starts doing the Hulk Hogan-like posing for fun. I mean... It was comical, but at the same time, great, a great thing for Hammerstone. And man, that 2300 arena erupted. Those people are right behind it. And they have got a big fight in Jacob Fatu and Alexander Hammerstone. They can hold this off for a little bit, make a massive card and sell a decent sized arena, I think. Put this thing on a iPay-per-view or whatever they need to do. I mean, damn it, take my money. I'm on board. I want to see this fight. I don't care if it's the only good match on the entire card. I'll give you 30, 40 bucks. What do you want, Port Bauer? Give me this match now. I couldn't agree more. And uh, is it uh, part of the winning the battle ride is, it, correct me if I'm wrong here, Bob, but uh, it Hammerstone gets a title shot whenever he wants. Like he can kind of like cash it in almost. Is, is that how this works? I, I, that's kind I of believe what they the said that. Way. Yeah, so like when I was hearing it, like I, I don't thinking, know if he can. Oh, sorry, to interrupt. Like, oh, you go first, dude. I was just gonna say I don't know if it's exactly like sort of like money in the bank where you can decide on the spot, like and run out to the ring and do it. But I think he can pick his pay per view or he can pick his his time to to sign the match, sort of thing. So that works in Hammerstone's favor too, and. Uh, he can pick a spot for when he feels fat too, might be a little bit more vulnerable or something. And uh, wow, we're just uh, leading up to this. This has been MLW's money match for two years now. And uh, I love the way they're making the fans wait 
wait for it and they're not just uh, blowing their wad, so to speak, uh, early. They're, they're going to build it for a long time. We're going to get that slow build, which we have been getting. They could stretch this out for many more months if they wanted to, and uh, we'll see where they go with it. But uh, the fans are invested in this match. It's their two top guys, their top heel and their top baby face. Everybody wants to see it. So it's just going to be a, a, a marvel when it finally happens. And uh, it's going to command a lot of uh, attention and a lot of eyeballs throughout the wrestling world. Yeah. And you know what? I'm glad that MLW's finally <clears throat> some eyes on their product, and I hope it continues to do so. So if you're checking our show out for the first time and you haven't checked out MLW before, go and give them a watch. Uh, make people aware of MLW because this is probably one of the best things going in professional wrestling today, especially for a show you can find so readily online uh, through any way, at any way, shape or form, as long as you have an internet connection, court Bauer has been giving this stuff to us for free for so long and kudos to him. And thank you very much to everybody in MLW for putting on an excellent show. Battle riot three gets a huge thumbs up for me. I'm sure you can uh, attest to that too. Bob smokes. Anyways, you yeah, want to two thank thumbs you up for me is, but yeah, they, continue months and I was just giving it my two thumbs up as well. Yeah, you bet, man. Uh, anyway, we want to thank everybody, not only for uh, tuning in to us, but also checking out all professional wrestling, especially uh, these companies like MLW, independent wrestling, uh, support your local independence and stuff like that as well, too. Uh, and hopefully we'll be seeing you guys all live again soon. Papa Smokes and I can't wait to get back on the commentary desk for Prairie Pro Wrestling. We need to crown a goddamn champion. So Papa Smokes, a title belt's been in a vault, all clean, all shiny, untouched by human hands since the beginning of the pandemic. This thing is going to be looking pretty around somebody's waist coming up sometime, hopefully before the end of this year, but we'll keep you guys posted. But anyway, thank you for tuning in to Ring Respect Radio. As always, click the subscribe button down below and give us a like as well. And thank you very much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. All right. Whoa, where'd my... Oh, hold on. I should... When you go to the old saloon at the dead south end Gonna find you a man there wants to be your friend If you dare to deny his wish you'll be dead by dawn So give him a drink and a smile and then move right on Rednecks with white faces Don't go put no down Face.